Hi, my name is Jeremy Hayes, and this is the video log assignment for Professor Reed's uh, children's literature class at California Baptist University. Uh, the first book I chose to read is called uh, Gandhi, Fighter Without a Sword uh, by Jeanette Eaton. Um, after reading this book, I classified the age range of approximately 12 to 14 years old, um, simply based on the writing style and the pictures illustrated in the book. Um, even though uh, the words are or the font actually is somewhat smaller than children's books and what they're used to. Um, it Just reading through it uh, goes by quite quickly. Um, it's very easy to follow along. Um, throughout the book, the author does a great job um, of just portraying Gandhi as a normal human being instead of uh, the great uh, leader and historical figure that he's known for. Um, uh, just a little fact from the book is that uh, his fa like even though Gandhi's family was well off financially, Gandhi actually chose to become uh, poor and chose that lifestyle of simplicity and poverty uh, just so that he would be able to help uh, other people that weren't so fortunate to be able to choose to get out of poverty. Um, and just the pictures in the book are very, uh, very well done. As you can see here, this is one of them. It just uh, really makes the story flow very well. Uh, it just basically tells a life story about Gandhi and what he's done throughout his life. Alright, for my second book, I chose uh, the story of George Washington Carver. Um, and the author of this book is Arna Bontemps. Um, and after reading this book, uh, this book could be read from ages 9 to 12, roughly, or even adults. Um, and it just goes through, uh, all of the, all of the, uh, issues that, uh, George Washington Carver had in his life. Um, he did groundbreaking work as a scientist and educator at Alabama's Tuskegee University under Booker T. Washington. Um, <clears throat> just goes through facts about the book and about Carver, um, uh, the book is very easy to read. Uh, the font is larger, easier to follow for younger, uh, younger children. Um, and the way Arna Bontemps uh, wrote this book actually just goes over uh, Carver's life from his from his uh, birth basically, and continues to follow him. Um, and just you read about the many different accomplishments that uh, Carver accomplished in his life. Um, his most famous accomplishment is. Uh, all of the different uses he has for the peanut and the sweet potato. My third book I chose is called, or is titled America is Born, and the author is Gerald W. Johnson. Um, for this book, I'd say it's a young adult book, but also could be taught in the K-6 through setting. Uh, once again, it's just super easy to read. Um, not a lot of uh, words are used that um, are difficult for children to understand. Uh, the vocabulary in the book is very, very easy to follow. Um, even though um, this book was written for, it says, America is born a history for Peter. Peter is actually um, the author's youngest grandson, um, and he wrote this book just to teach his youngest grandson about uh, all the different facts about American history in general. Um, just going throughout uh, the United States, learning about everything. Um, just from the beginning of beginning of when America was formed in the United States. Um, okay, the fourth book I chose is uh, called Frontier Living, and this is actually an illustrated guide to pioneer life in America and. It includes a bunch of cool pictures and everything, and it was actually uh, it was written and it was also illustrated by Edwin Tunis. Uh, there's over 200 drawings in this book, so that plays a very important part uh, when he's delivering his message on the history of uh, frontier living in America. Uh, this is definitely uh, very, uh, in my opinion, it's more of a difficult book, so it would definitely be the earliest of sixth grade. Uh, that readers would be able to uh, really get into it and understand it completely. Um, 
all of the pictures and the drawings um, used are very well done and they basically just go along directly with uh, the, the, uh, the written commentary that the author does um, and this just makes it flow a lot better. Um, you're able to follow and really really uh, picture in your mind uh, what exactly was going on because there's the illustration for you to follow. It gives you just a bunch of um, different different pictures that you can follow. Um, like there's just different styles of everything. Um, it just really helps flow. Um, after reading it, I thought it was more of a juvenile researcher's book, more than a, a story, I guess you could say. Um, it really it's really more for people wanting to learn more about uh, frontier living in the United States rather than just uh, rather than just uh, just history in general. So it really narrows it down for you. And it talks about uh, different different aspects of living, pretty much. Uh, the last book I chose uh, is called The Great American Gold Rush. And this is by the author uh, Roder, Rhoda, excuse me, Rhoda Bloomberg. Uh, this book's ages pretty much 11 to 13. Um, it's really easy to read. Again, um, it does has a lot of good pictures, so children will children will have their interest kept while reading this book. Um, in this book, it has a bunch of uh, not just drawings but pictures as well that go along exactly with the words that we were able to visualize as I said with the Frontier Living book as well. Uh, it's really a strong point in this novel or this book. Um, it really helps uh, obviously it helps define uh, teach younger people about uh, all of the issues during the gold rush and just the period of the gold rush in general and, uh, with the pictures it shows exactly exactly what it was like. Um, inside here there's actually like letters and diaries and newspapers um, that are all put in here that way you know uh, this was actually from that time so you know exactly what what it looks like is here's a uh, there's a poster from the gold rush time period um, it has posters um, and the author did a good job <clears throat> of just going through the history of the gold rush and just being able to teach people exactly what went on um, and it does it does a really good job of keeping your attention as well um, and that's for me being 20 years old so for younger people it should really be able to keep their attention just with all the pictures and all the all the story that you're able to follow and it gives you a lot of good information um, overall, I think all these books are very, very well written for <clears throat> the younger age audience, and it helps. It will help them uh, learn about history um, in a easier, more friendly way for them. But um, a teacher for K through six would be specifically more towards sixth grade, fifth and sixth grade. All these books are leaned towards. Um, and a teacher would just be able to pick these up and have their students want to read them and actually after reading them want to learn more about each area such as the gold rush or the frontier living um, and that's just from the United States perfect perspective excuse me and then you have the Gandhi book which talks about Gandhi and that's from a different part of the world um, but it still incorporates history in all of its all of its storytelling it's not just not just a novel it's actually facts and telling people exactly what happened and what he did right. so thank you for watching and goodbye